I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Please do your own research. Welcome to the Vinny G Markets channel brought to you by Vinny G Money. And we have another market updates video. It's been two weeks since our last video. So let's pull up the charts. These are monthly charts, but we do pull up May 2nd, which is from two weeks ago. The S&P 500 for two weeks, it's down almost 3% at 4023. The Dow Jones two weeks uh, down about 2.5% at 32 one. 96 and we have the nasdaq down almost five percent at 11805 and that's within two weeks and you know what we say about the nasdaq and the higher interest rate environment the tech sector it's just gonna get hit harder than everything else and speaking of interest rates let's get into our three indicators the first u.s 10-year treasury it's currently at 2.93 percent we opened at 2.98 percent it rose all the way to 3.12 it dropped to about 2.8 and we settled at around 2 point nine three now i do believe because the federal reserve is going to continue to raise interest rates which we'll get into a little bit more we will eventually be above and stay above three percent which i don't find being an issue as long as this u.s 10-year treasury doesn't begin spiking at levels that are uncontrollable which we're not seeing right now so even though the overall markets are down again i just don't see this as being the overall big market crash which will happen eventually but i just don't see it because this u.s 10-year treasury it is remaining stable which means the debt market is stable and the stock market is a derivative from the debt market so as long as that debt market is all right the stock market i just don't see crashing which many people believe that's the phase that we already started so let's go to our second indicator the u.s dollar index continuing to rise at 104 but as we continuously state on this channel this is due to world turmoil as we have a lot of global uncertainty going on so people are just going to move to the US dollar as opposed to other world currencies because it is the safer option. And we'll get into our third indicator, which is crude oil. We left off at about 104 two weeks ago. We dipped at one point below $100, but it popped back up. What do we say about crude oil and energy? It's not going to get cheaper for anybody anytime soon. We're currently at around 110, a 6% increase over these past two weeks. So now let's get to the price action of the stock market. We'll pull up the S&P 500. We did draw that support level from two weeks ago around 4100 we did dip below that i think we hit around 3900 before we bounce back up again to above 4000 and the reason why we had to bounce back up it's due to the interest rates that u.s 10-year treasury did start dipping which did give the opportunity for the stock market to breathe a little bit and we had a nice little rally on friday and it is a little interesting that the interest rates didn't start rising more because at the end of last week uncle Jerome Rome came out. He said that it's going to be appropriate for two 50 point basis rate hikes in the next two Fed meetings in June and July. And some people, including myself, might view this as being a little too aggressive for the stock market, but they might just be putting the perception out there that they're going to raise interest rates like this, but at some point slow it down. But what's definitely helping the market in those interest rates is they are continuously taking off the table the 75 basis point rate hike. So the market could be viewing this says as long as they're not raising it by 75 basis points and at some point eventually cool off the 50 basis points which could be in the third meeting the market's going to be fine with that but we also know it's more about the tapering of bond asset purchases that they haven't even started yet and they failed to update us on and we haven't pulled these up in a while the reverse repos they're still going at outrageous rates 1.8 trillion and you would have to go back to our PES videos but these reverse repos they could be used to manipulate the interest rates keeping the debt market stable so as long as the federal reserve keeps buying these assets these reverse repos could still remain at a high level keeping the debt market in a stable fashion which helps the stock market stay elevated but going back to the s p 500 just because i'm saying the big market crash it's not here it doesn't mean we can't continue this corrective phase that we're on and possibly bringing us into bear market territory so based off a of price action perspective i feel and we're going to find this out all next week we would need about two decent size rallies hopefully at the beginning of the week possibly monday and tuesday and then when there is a pullback we can't give away all those gains if we open the market monday and we're giving away gains right away it could indicate that we're going to stay in this corrective phase and there's more negative to come but again this does not mean nor do i think we're entering crash market territories a lot of people thinking this is a market crash going on i probably haven't been in the market for 
a while and they're new investors we're nowhere near crash market territory we're just going to find another support level and then once we find that support level from there we're going to see whether the market wants to bounce back up or continue to go down but again we know what to look for when it comes to that market crash it's a spike in those interest rate levels the implosion of the debt market that's the only thing that's going to indicate a market crash to us so for the near term future we're going to monitor this price action if we do rally and don't give back those gains that's where we really could start seeing this stock market really start hitting higher highs i know people think that's impossible right now but if we are able to bounce up above that 4100 level i really could see us start making some higher highs again but we know what to look for so you might want to stay put for now we're going to wait to see if we continue to drop if we continue to drop we know to stay put and wait to find that next support level if we move up above that 4100 and these pullbacks aren't that bad after that we know that we could start putting money to work because these markets might start ripping higher so now that we know what to look for when it comes to the price action of the stock market i now want to go over which is the main point of this video the warning shots that were given by the federal reserve last week and to be honest i can't even believe the mainstream media isn't even reporting on what they said but we'll get right into it and first i just want to reiterate that the economy has nothing to do with the stock market in 2020 they shut the entire economy down and the stock market just started making crazy highs the economy we're not in a recession we're well beyond that we're worse than a recession i don't even know what to call what we're at but first we have the federal reserve now admitting that inflation is not transitory that they waited too long to raise interest rates and now they can't guarantee some type of safe landing this is nothing new Vinny G markets channel we've been reporting that inflation is not transitory since we started this channel last year so if the Vinny G markets channel knew about this you best believe the federal reserve knew about it they're just playing stupid right now but at the end of the day because this is the game they play they're not gonna have the finger pointed at them for crashing the stock market again the economy is totally different but they're not gonna be the reason to blame for the stock market crashing so any issues that they're admitting such as rampant inflation and also now they're admitted there's a liquidity problem in the market we have fed warns of worsening market liquidity and stability report these aren't going to be issues that crash the market because they're making it visible the market crash it's going to come from an unforeseen event these market liquidity problems they're just going to toss more money to make sure it doesn't crash the stock market and when it comes to higher inflation that's just not going to crash the market in general because there's another way the federal reserve is going to deal with this inflation problem which is that warning shot we're going to go over right now so the federal reserve continues to raise interest rates at the same time the cost of living or any assets when it comes to essential goods keep rising as well and now the federal reserve is looking to get this under control through raising interest rates but it's not through raising interest rates in the way we're thinking of the way they're raising interest rates is just hurting the average person and hurting and making it more difficult for the average person to live is exactly what the federal reserve wants to do this is not conspiracy this is all stated in this article powell says fed will hike further and faster if necessary and this is the warning shot powell pointed to a near record high level of open jobs which topped 11 million in january that is equivalent to 1.7 available positions for every unemployed person he suggested that higher rates from the fed could slow consumer spending enough to reduce that outsized demand for workers which would in turn reduce wage growth to a level that wouldn't boost inflation this is a labor market that is out of balance powell said which he acknowledged was good for workers because it meant higher pay for many but those wage gains can also lead companies to raise prices to offset their higher labor costs we need the labor market to be sustainably tight he said powell's remarks followed a flurry of comments from officials concerning fed policy since last week's meeting all pointing in a hawkish direction so through this statement the federal reserve is telling you their answer to fight inflation is to raise rates so companies just stop hiring and when companies stop hiring that's going to curb demand for consumer spending because people either aren't going to have jobs or they're just going to be making less money and this is all further explained through this article why the fed wants corporate america to have a hiring freeze after recent job numbers were released last week bank of america analysis said in a note they are essentially rooting against the home team and hope the numbers stop being so strong as higher 
of wages contribute to inflation. The Federal Reserve appears to agree. Chad Powell keeps mentioning the relationship between high level of job openings and the wage price inflation. He's not talking to investors. He's talking to corporate America. And his goal is to have companies essentially institute a hiring freeze and end the cycle of paying up for new hires. And if you remember in our earlier videos, we would always bring up the unemployment numbers, but we just stopped that because those numbers were getting better where people were going back to work. And you could also see it in this article. Millions retired early during the pandemic. Many are now returning to work. New data shows a tight labor market, better C-word outlooks, and higher wages are luring retirees back to the workforce. But let's be honest, people are returning back to work because they have to. They just can't make ends meet. These people never had the savings to retire. They just didn't want to go back to work. And plus, the government was sending them free money. All that has stopped. And the prices of goods have just gone up. So the combination of the government no longer sending out free money, along with people burning through their savings while they were retired, is causing this household debt near $16 trillion despite rising rates and inflation. It doesn't matter that the rates are rising. People need to borrow because they haven't been working. Need to, at the very least, go back to work, which is fine now because the job openings are there. But again, the Federal Reserve is telling us they're going to work on cutting this. And the Federal Reserve is not lying here. And this is going to catch people by surprise because most people have no idea who the Federal Reserve is, what they do. Never mind pay attention to the things that they say. But all y'all hearing this on the Vinny G Markets channel, the Federal Reserve... They're not going to tackle inflation by dealing with the prices of goods. They're going to deal with it by curbing consumer spending. And they're going to curb consumer spending by taking away jobs and paying people less. Because when you raise interest rates, it makes it harder for corporations to borrow money. And corporations have to protect their bottom line for the investor. And the first things corporations do to save money is decrease their workforce and cut salaries. Which is exactly what the Federal Reserve wants corporations to do. And they're telling telling you that right in plain sight this is one of the more sinister things i've seen the federal reserve say which is why this is a major warning shot this narrative that there's all these jobs out here and companies are paying more to hire people that's all gonna take a turn for the worse most likely sooner than later but even for the potential of all these layoffs happening it's not gonna affect the pricing of essential goods people are still gonna need energy and food whether they're working or not it's just gonna decrease the demand for luxury items but that's why we speak of having our base and core investments in things like energy crude oil commodity etfs food etfs because look at some of the headlines over here we still have russia cutting off european countries from crude oil and energy we also have this nopec deal we have saudi energy ministers hit back at nopec bill says it could send oil prices surging we have the united states like we went over in our last video tapping in to the strategic oil reserves while well, they're not even being used in the United States they're being sent to Europe to help with this energy problem and again that's just draining our reserves along with the president canceling offshore oil lease sales in Gulf Coast Alaska the Biden administration is canceling three oil and gas lease sales scheduled in the Gulf of Mexico and off the coast of Alaska removing millions of acres of possible drilling as US gas prices reach record highs and to no surprise like we've been covering OPEC continues to underproduce and those are just headlines for energy now let's look at what we have for food we have Russia stealing grains from Ukraine Ukraine warns countries about buying its stolen grain US 40 billion aid to Ukraine faces delay Ukraine warns that Russians are stealing Ukrainian grain and any country who buys stolen grain from Russia is considered to be complicit in the crime and if stealing grains weren't bad enough we have calls grow for Russia to free up Ukraine Ukrainian ports for grain exports. We have G7 to continue economic pressure on Russia to tackle wheat war. And we literally had this in our last video. We had a clip of India who was going to help with the export of wheat during this crisis. But now we have India bans wheat exports and try to tame prices as scorch and heat wave curtail output. So India who is going to be called upon to pick up some of the slack in supplying the globe for wheat. That's no longer going to be happening happening or happening as freely so if you've been tuning into the Vinny G markets channel you see the stage is clearly being set up for people to eventually be losing their jobs at the same time the prices of energy and food continuing to still go
go up, along with the continuing rise of interest rates, making it more expensive for people to borrow money. So our investment strategies going forward, whether it's right or wrong, it's to stay in crude oil, energy, commodity ETFs, and food ETFs, because these asset classes could still stay elevated, even if the broader market still goes down in a time of turbulence due to everything that we just stated, because we also know the Federal Reserve is not tackling inflation by solving these problems. They're tackling inflation by getting people to lose their jobs and to curb consumer spending. But at the same time, we want to be in asset classes that are going to rebound along with the broader market. Because again, that US 10 year treasury, it's currently at 2.93. The debt market is stable and there is a chance for the market to rebound and continue to reach higher highs. Again, we've been over what we need to look at in that price action. So again, whether we're right or wrong, that's where we want to be in defense contractors and yes big banks because big banks are going to benefit with these interest rate raises and if the price action which we spoke about earlier goes our way if you want to take a bigger risk you can go into big tech such as microsoft and apple either way those high tech high growth and even cryptos will get into a little bit i just don't see them performing well they might have their pops here and there but again the high interest rates they're just going to be a drain on these high growth high tech companies and the crypto markets took a big hit but you've been following the Vinny G Markets channel you would have been expecting this we've been stating this in the subconscious mind of the crypto market in other videos that cryptos are not a hedge against inflation they need to be looked at as high growth high tech stocks which are going to struggle with higher interest rates and what happened with the crypto market it's due to the eventual regulation and not to get into it too much I do need to start making separate videos when it comes to the crypto market but we have stable coins stable coins are supposed to be pegged at one dollar and not fluctuate but we had the stable coin luna just tanking people losing money who thought it should have been safe and pegged at a dollar we also have tether and you could go back to my subconscious mind of the crypto market to see how i feel about tether but they are a huge coin and have the third most market cap in the crypto market but they sunk below a dollar as well for a short time and when dealing with the crypto market you're just gonna have to expect shenanigans like this again it's all plan this is just going to bring in the eventual regulation from you as regulators when it comes to the crypto market again it's not a hedge against inflation i do believe in holding core investments but you have to understand and only have a certain money amount in these investments that it's going to go down over time until the real use cases start picking up which again it could be another two three who knows five ten years from now when it comes to these cryptos and you also need to understand that 90 to 99 percent of these old coins in the crypto market are going to disappear or go bankrupt we go over this a little bit in the subconscious mind video but again i'm going to try to put out another video just going over cryptos and what we could expect with that so with this video we heard the warning shots sent out by the federal reserve so we're situating ourselves accordingly so if you want to continue to stay ahead of the game come mess with your boy if you like what you hear hulk smash that like button and as always i'll leave you off with this the god of the bible the God of Abraham, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is real, and may he bless you. Remember, we're not going back to the same economy. This will be a different economy. And one of the things we hear from, from uh, companies is that they've spent a lot of time since the pandemic arrived, looking at ways to have more effective technology and perhaps fewer people. So you're going to see some of that in these public facing jobs. So uh, there will be millions of people who have a hard time finding their way back into the workforce and recovering the lives that they had just a year ago. And, you know, uh, I think 